1994, Apple released the QuickTake 100, which was a collaboration between Chinon Industries, a Japanese manufacturing optics company, and Kodak, an American digital imaging research company. At the front, it had an LED timer, built-in flash, and by sliding the fascia, a fixed focused lens, two light exposure sensors, and the forward-looking viewfinder. On one side, it had a concealed barrel jack for external power, and an 8-pin mini DIN for computer comms. And on the other side, a battery compartment for internal power. And finally, on the base, the model details. So, let's open it up, review how it works, and hopefully take some pictures and connect it to a period correct Apple computer. To appreciate the QuickTake 100 color digital camera, we need to understand the competition at the time. Starting with the 1990 Logitech Photoman, which is considered to be the first commercially available black and white digital camera. The 1991 Kodak DCS100, which is considered the first commercially available color digital single lens reflex camera. And in 1994, the Apple QuickTake 100, which is widely regarded as the first mainstream affordable consumer color digital camera. And looking at this comparison table, we can see the early Logitech Photoman is monochrome only and whilst the Kodak DCS100 is superior with higher resolution colour images, back in 1991 it was enough money to buy a house. And somewhere in the middle, the Apple QuickTake 100 was regarded as the first affordable colour digital alternative. So, let's open it up to see inside Apple's QuickTake 100 and to see if we can derive how it worked. First off, we have these three quad bilateral analog switches. The take a picture switch, flip-flop logic, the 8-bit image analog to digital converter, a display interface controller, the custom ASIC, and one megabyte of RAM. Which means we can now work out how it works via these logic chips which control analog data from the CCD, which converts the analog image signals to digital, store it in onboard memory, all managed by the ASIC. And once you've finished taking your photos, they can be downloaded from this 8-pin mini DIN we saw earlier via this ribbon connector. And here we have the display controller, which via this connector manages the LCD. So let's add some batteries and switch on the camera by sliding open this fascia. On the rear LCD menu, we have image resolution selection, which defaults to eight high or 32 low resolution images, both with 24 bit color. The 10 second timer selector, flash selection, and erase memory by inserting a pin into here. So let's take a picture and reference the Apple QuickTake 100 user guide to find out the period correct computer specifications. 
we need at least a Macintosh with a 68020 CPU, system software version 7.1, 8 megabytes of RAM, an Apple super floppy disk drive, and a hard drive with 10 megabytes available. So, referencing my previous video, let's open up this Macintosh Performer 400 to check the specifications. So we have more than adequate CPU power with this Motorola 6830, system software 7.1, onboard and two RAM SIM pairs, which together provide 10 megabytes of contiguous RAM. More than enough disk space via this modern Zulu SCSI Blaster SD card solution and our super floppy disk drive. So let's set up the Performer 400 connect our QuickTime camera, download and install supporting software and retrieve our first photo. Entering the real world, let's take some colourful photos of Bournemouth Pier, situated on the south coast of England. A quick take high resolution image, which although inferior, still displays the key features. However, this lower resolution image starts to lose some of that detail. Moving over to the promenade, let's test the white balance via this impressive building, which mostly displays the contrasting colours, however the clouds appear a little dark and grainy. And finally, these blue and turquoise beach huts demonstrate good colour depth from the quick take. So here it is, the 30 plus year old Apple Quick Take 100, the camera that captured just 8 photos at a time, with a resolution that wouldn't even pass for a thumbnail today. And yet, in 1994, this little binocular shaped gadget cracked open the door to consumer digital photography. Apple, a company struggling for relevance back then, took a risk on a future 
that most people couldn't even imagine. A world where film was optional and pixels would change the world.